Can AI design a 3D printed set of earrings? To answer this question, I used Midjourney AI and a prompt model wearing 3D printed earring set and added a parameter for geometric fractals. Fractals are a composition of the same shape repeated at different sizes to create a larger hole. Lots of artists use fractals for geometric style art and you can find it in the materials at different Islamic architecture. Here are some of the variations of an earring set that Midjourney created using my prompt. The one that I really liked was the bright white earring with a variety of voids within it. Using the AI generated image as an example, I use a software called Rhinoceros to create a 3D model. I start with a rectangle for the overall size of one earring, which will be two inches tall by one and a quarter inches wide. Now, I draw a one inch square, rotate it 45 degrees to match what I saw in the image, and snap the top point to the midpoint of the rectangle that I originally drew. I copy it down, and this is the start of the overall shape. I won't go over every step of my process here, so if you want to understand the logic behind creating the 3D model, I used the image that Midjourney generated as a reference, drew lines to mimic the geometric patterns. Then I used a plugin for Rhinoceros called Grasshopper. Let's skip ahead to that part of the process. I haven't used Grasshopper in a long time, so I followed a YouTube tutorial to learn how to create a 3D Voronoi pattern that automatically attaches to a surface. Watching and following along with this tutorial definitely made me feel old and out of touch with technology. But it was a great step-by-step -step process and after about 10 minutes, I generated the script that I'm using here to create a Voronoi pattern. Now you might be wondering, Tim, what's a Voronoi pattern? I'll be honest, I really don't know. According to Google, it's the idea that every object is simply a series of points. Voronoi Patterns takes the randomization of points and connects them with lines. Or at least that's my understanding based on that definition. The cool thing is that you can see Voronoi Patterns all around the world. In fact, you can see how it was used in the Beijing Aquatic Center for the pattern on the facade and rooftop. It's a really popular way for generating patterns for conceptual architecture projects. By plugging in the surfaces of the earring design into the beginning of the script, it auto-generates the Voronoi pattern for us including the thickness and depths of each part of the model. What I love most about Grasshopper is that you can adjust some of the sliders to modify the amount of voids, variations of the pattern, and the depth of the frame. Once we like an option, we just right-click the component at the very end of the script and click Bake. That generates the model in Rhino so you can use it. I repeat this with each of the surfaces that I created in Rhino. The last step of the process is to mirror the Voronoi objects around to fill each section of the original outline that we created for the earring. Then, we extrude the frame that goes between each of the Voronoi areas, use the boolean union command to join everything together, and cut out a circle at the top of the frame where the earring accessory is going to be attached. Now, we can import the 3D model into a slicing software and create each step for the 3D printer to follow to construct the earring set. There's one part of the print that I'm worried about, and it's the bridge that the printer needs to build between the thick frame parts and the intricate patterns between them. We'll go with this and learn from the experience. I fire up my Prusa 3D printer and start the printing process. The first few layers were printing perfectly because they're the layers for the thicker frame of the earrings. As the 3D printer moves up, we'll see it start filling in the spaces between the frame to create what's referred to as a bridge. This lets the printer span across empty areas of a print and build up the next layers. At this point, you can see it starting to create the bridge. It's actually creating fuzzy areas because the pattern is so intricate and thin that it's trying to use as little of the filament as possible. Because of the heat of the nozzle and the quick motions, it actually leaves little strands of plastic behind as it moves. Hopefully, the printer can actually use these bridges to span across and create the intricate patterns in the future layers. After about 3 hours, you can see that it's cleaning up really nicely on this side of the earring. The printer is working through the inner patterns and all the layers are going on smoothly. I'm sure there's going to be an issue with the opposite part of the earring that's facing down where we're going to see the fuzzy parts. I'll try and smooth those areas out when the print is done. When the print was complete, I removed it from the printing bed and placed it on my workbench. Using surgical grade steel earring accessories, I attached the end through the circle cutout of the earring set.
now the AI designed earrings are complete. Some of the layers were a little too thin for my printer to build in real life. So the way that I would use AI for product design is just to use it as a reference and inspiration. You still need to apply design and practical knowledge so that the end product works in real life. If you enjoyed this project, check out my other 3D printed craft videos and consider subscribing. I'll see you again next week. Thank you.